Hi, my name is Dale Maley, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to use the Motion Gen simulation program to optimize your linkage designs. A little background on myself I like designing and building hand cranked marble machines, and a few weeks ago, I discovered a free simulation program called Motion Gen. You can do a Google search for Motion Gen to download or to use the program. You actually use it on your web browser. And here's the internet address if you want to go there to try out this simulation software. Now in the past, I've often used the SketchUp free drafting program, doing kind of a trial and error approach to optimize linkage designs until I get one that works. But a few days ago as I was learning about the Motion Gen program, I discovered a very neat way to optimize the linkage. And in this program, when you change something, the resultant motion path is changed simultaneously. So you can use this feature to very quickly learn the sensitivity of a design and then quickly find the optimum design for your application. Once I learned about this very neat feature in the Motion Gen program, I decided to make a short video to help people learn a neat way to quickly optimize the linkage design. The example we'll be using is one of my marble escapement mechanisms I recently built. Now here's my SketchUp design of part of my marble machine. In particular, this is the loading mechanism where I have a blue piston on the left which moves up and down and then when it comes down it actually hits the red beam which in turn raises the kind of bluish link and raises the red swinging arm. And it, mainly I need to release just one marble per stroke of the piston. If I didn't have this mechanism, multiple marbles would either load or they'd fall out. So I need to re release just one for every stroke of the piston. Now I've zoomed in on SketchUp so you get a, a closer view of this marble loading mechanism, sometimes called an escapement mechanism because it's letting one marble escape at a time. But anyway, there's the blue piston that comes down, contacts the red kind of rocking beam there and then uh, it's only about a quarter inch of travel on the actual model. When the red beam is pushed down, that pushes that bluish green link up, which raises the orange swinging arm to clear the one inch high marbles. And then when the blue piston moves up, that swinging arm comes down and it keeps any of the other marbles from escaping. So I need that orange arm to lift just a little more than an inch to clear the marbles. So next, let's actually go into the program and I'll show you what I mean about a very quick way to optimize uh, design linkage. Okay, here we are in the Motion Gen program. I have the marble escapement linkage drawn up and this is the design that I ended up actually building a model and it works. But if we remember from the example, the swinging arm here, it pivots on the right hand side then on the left hand side that's to represent the tip where that comes down and separates the marbles and we need to have a, a stroke of uh, just over an inch because the marbles are one inch in height so we need about an inch and then if you remember I'm using a piston a blue piston that's coming down and it pushes on the, the green element that in turn raises the blue link and raises the swinging arm well, to simulate that, I'm using a linear actuator shown in red here to do that. So let's just run the model so we remember how it works. So each time the actuator, linear actuator comes down, which simulates the blue piston coming down, that actually lifts the arm up uh, about an inch. Each grid on there is an inch. So that gives you an idea how it works. Now the really neat thing that I discovered kind of by accident the paths of the points, the pivot points, or joints, are shown in red here, the little curves. So here's the tip moving down about an inch. There's a little curve up here where the blue uh, vertical link meets up with the swinging arm. There's another little red path down here. This is kind of a balance beam or rocking beam over here. It's grounded over here, and it only moves a short distance. So the thing we're really interested in this particular design is the stroke over here of the arm. So let's go up and grab this point up here of the blue link 
and let's move it and note that while we move it the red path of the tip is going to change so let's swing it over this way let's see what happens it's less travel over there now as we start to move it over here it starts to travel in a down position much more uh, dramatically so you can see the impact of moving that arm so let's go up and hit the backwards or undo key up here take it back to where it was so now let's look at the impact what is uh, changing the point down here where the blue link hits the green what does that do okay <clears throat> if we make it longer it doesn't do much if we make it uh, longer in a horizontal direction it increases the stroke of that arm both directions as you can see here if we bring it over closer to the pivot point of the beam it gets very very small okay let's undo that so we saw the impact of that okay now this balance beam that ought to be a sensitive uh, pivot point right here the green and we're essentially using that as a lever and we're magnifying the action of the red actuator hitting the green beam so we would expect if we move this to the right we're going to see less stroke so let's do that and indeed we do we see less stroke if we move it to the left we're going to see more stroke probably dramatic impact yes it's a big impact on that on that side so that's a key member here to to optimize the design and let's undo that one the last thing to look at here would be the linear actuator now if we move the uh, fixed ground point on this let's see what happens we'll move it up and we get a big impact of the arm swinging further downwards on that it doesn't go up though and what if we're really concerned about getting that inch of travel up of the arm this doesn't help at all this goes in the wrong direction so let's undo that now the only way I found to change uh, changes was to change the stroke so if we click on that linear actuator that we see the stroke is about a quarter inch it's 0.263 what happens if we increase that up to say 0.5 half an inch. Let's go from a quarter inch to half an inch travel. Let's watch the red um, stroke of the tip when we hit enter. Bingo! That's extremely sensitive to stroke. We can get that arm to lift uh, oh two and a half inches instead of just an inch by just changing the stroke amount. So we can see, let's uh, undo that. So in this design the key elements in terms of getting that tip to move are the uh, pivot point of the fulcrum beam and then the stroke of the actuator. So if I was first designing this I could very quickly figure out hey what's the best design for my marble escapement mechanism. It's a very neat tool that it moves the uh, travel, the red curves, more or less simultaneously as you move the link, link joints around or you change the stroke of the actuator. So some closing thoughts on this video. The Motion Gen simulation program, I'm finding it relatively easy to learn how to use it. The learning curve is not too bad. And this feature of changing the motion path as you adjust the key parameters is really an efficient way to optimize the design. And this feature is not in another, I, I've used another simulation program, the free program called linkage.exe. Unfortunately in that program, uh, does not change the path automatically. You make a change and you have to run the program again to see the impact on the travel of the joint. So this is really a nice feature that's built into Motion Gen. So in summary this video explains how to use the Motion Gen simulation software to optimize a linkage. You can see my many other YouTube videos that I have many different marble machines and the associated mechanisms or linkages that go with them. I hope this video helps you on your projects. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe. Thank you.